Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the TBM crew. Today, I have a very special guest, my beloved Larry from the horror fan club Kenya, who has a very super secret project to talk us about, <laughs> right? Yes. Hello, Mar. It has been quite a while since we last spoke. The last too, time we had a conversation about long. life. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, just even before we start this uh, fun chat, uh, Dave can say hi, just wave. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> He's also a member of the Horror Fan Club Kenya. <laughs> and, yes. We are growing time small, uh, a little bit by a little bit. So yeah. Anyway, um, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure, Mao, you are curious about what the Horror Fan Club Kenya has. And Very much. Our, and that is our horror web series. Ah. Uh, um, first of all, I think, uh, let me just, uh, a, a huge shout out to our collaborators who are Creative Garage, which is a very a lovely um, art slash cultural inst institution here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. We've made the whole production process very smooth. And also my cast, which who we will see them uh, in yes. a couple of yes. And um, yeah, and the people just were very kind enough to let us use their location, use their equipment and all of that. I really just want to say a huge thank you. So, um, the title to our horror web series, yes. Rum Rocky, that is engraved. It is called Engraved. Um, and the reason I am the director, um, I couldn't do it without like a couple of other like assistant directors and supervisors mm -hmm. who hopefully will join us in our future chat um the title engraved was more of like i wanted something to i wanted a title that is so heavy on people but at the same time simple so uh, the term engraved means basically something being engraved in you something that sticks something yes. that lasts in your mind so that's why i chose that title it's more or less a, a psychological uh horror film so I sort of like sourced uh, some of my ideas from Silence of the Lambs, Hush yes. by Michael Flanagan. And those were like two major um, films that I sourced to my inspiration towards this web series. Fun fact, initially it wasn't supposed to be a web series. It was yes. supposed to be a feature film. Uh -huh. And when I took it to Creatives Garage, they were like, oh, there are so many good ideas to be squeezed into like 40 minutes. Why don't you make it a series? I'm like, what? Okay, we can make it a series, I guess. Yes, yeah. that's an amazing idea. Yeah, yeah, that's how we turned it into an online series. Yet to premiere, we're still like fine tuning some elements of the series and also trying to drum up a little bit of audience for it. Yes. Yeah. And where do you plan to release it? Oh, we plan to release it um on August. Uh, it will we will have like two premieres to premiere date on August uh, in Kenya, Nairobi, of course. Oh, uh, and okay. also online, it will be released at close, more or less towards the end of August. So don't you worry, you can find it online um, on our Creative Garage's website called Calabas. It's like an African YouTube. So yeah, yes. that's something to look to. There are some other amazing things there. Awesome. And can you tell us a bit about the plot? Some hints? All right, so basically, hmm, mm. <laughs> I mm. avoid a lot of spoilers, but uh, basically the plot centers around like the human mind, like how far can you push the human mind? Um, it centers around a doctor, a doctor who is supposedly calm, who's calm in demeanor, who's very composed, has his life um sorted out you know that kind of yeah. person yes but mm -hmm. uh, later on in the film um based off love and a sense of insane loyalty he is taken advantage of by a lady who has sinister motives towards his social circle so he, the lady sort of manipulates him and yes. drives him to the point of insanity Ooh. so what I did is like I took my viewers and sort of like flipped the whole film to the point of view of 
uh, one of the victims of this young doctor. So at, mm, at the beginning, I don't, okay, you pretty much see this, but at the beginning, sort of like see it through the eyes of the victim. So the guy is painted as the villain, but of course there is someone pulling the strings behind. And that person is not who you would expect in terms of how he relates to the That's um, amazing. I like and it. <laughs> Yes. We tried we tried to be a little bit gory and 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 violent with the film, but then again, um the film laws in Kenya don't quite give us a lot of leeway towards that. So yeah. sort of like tone the blood and the gore. So there'll be a little bit of that. But yeah, and it's you, more psychology. Yeah, and, and do you introduce in it uh, any of your folklore of the African horror folklore? Um, uh, uh, if you if you if you if you're keen enough, if you're keen enough, and like sort of are really deeply rooted into like um Kenyan slash African folklore, um, I'm pretty sure you will find some car like um the character that the doctor embodies, um, is similar to a lot of African legends like African. Uh, royalties, African warriors, especially the really famous ones in 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 like the Maasai, in like the Nandi, they had like sort of this general um, aura of um, how can I put this? This yes. general aura of like you know they they have things under control. They know they can handle this. Oh, even a good uh, a good example is the previous um, story I was telling you on my TikTok um, about Rwanda Magere. Like yes. he's strong. He was a fearsome yes. warrior. He was yes. battling entire like uh, battalions of, of, of the enemy tribe. But the person who brought him down was a woman who sort of like just found out his secret. So basically uh, I sort of like saw uh, some of the most common attributes of African warriors, African leaders, African royals, and sort of like chose the most common, which is like strong men being brought down by women. Because yes. that was very evident in like a lot of African stories and a lot of like Kenyan stories. It's also common in like a lot of Greek and other international uh, folklore. So yeah, yes. that's, that's one you should expect. That's very interesting. Because mm -hmm. all the horror based on mm, manipulation, uh, narcissist kind of psychopath that manipulates yeah. others. I mean, that's something you can really relate to. Maybe not like that story itself, but yeah. um, I think it's something that can touch a lot of yeah. people of people's minds. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 And how Absolutely. is it to work with your cast? Tell us about a bit of the making of. How how the, is the process? But at the beginning, it's usually hectic, especially <laughs> uh, just getting things. The pre-production is so bad. Like I remember, I almost quit uh, mid pre-production. I was like, I am done. I am, I am tired of of going to look for locations, locations canceling on us, trying to get equipment, equipment not being available, trying to do yes. this. Not, <laughs> like, it was so hectic to a point I was like, ah, you know what? I, I'm alive. I, I have other passions I want to do, but luckily yeah. I had such a supportive cast. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure like, so I, I'll just shout out to like my lead characters. They were the ones who were pushing, they were like, Larry, just continue do this. You you already started. Like this is the heaviest bit. So that was the pre-production. The pre-production was really grueling, especially getting people to sort of like collaborate with and partner with, because you have to be there and be like. I want to create a horror film, and like I said, like in Kenya, the last horror film that was dead was like um ten years ago. So bringing that concept back again people will take it with um a bit of salt like uh, the last horror was 
six years ago or rather 10 years ago yeah why should we trust you in doing this uh this is not successful a lot of people uh in kenya are very conservative that would watch this so trying to convince like collaborators to do it was quite hard but um i'm glad like uh, creative garage accepted it so once they did they covered like a lot of the cost shooting was hectic we had to wake up like really early in the morning like almost three especially for the first scenes because we had such a very tiny tiny time limit yes. uh, because of the limited resources so we had to wake up like three i remember there's a time i woke up at three just to go through um my call sheet and the script with my assistant uh supervisor uh, script supervisor so it was just i remember that that day that week was just yes i was burning out but not realizing it because um, after the shoot i was so tired i slept for like an entire day like through <laughs> throughout an entire like 24 hours i was asleep and fun fact <laughs> um since dave is also here like before the shoot this is how close like this is how close i was to not doing this film before we started shooting uh the previous day i got arrested um, <laughs> no <laughs> why to, like, what did you do no, we, it was like during curfew hours and I remember that day we were getting like our final props for because since um, COVID-19 was still a thing here and there was the curfew. So we got uh, late uh, getting some of the props, the blood, um, the makeup. So we got up late. So when we were going home, so um, the police caught up with us. They were like, um, so where are you going at this hour? And then we were from shopping. What are you shopping? And then when they opened our bags, they, they all, they, they, they saw uh, like fake blood and we had a prop gun. They were like, why are you carrying weapons? They were like, it's not a weapon, it's fake. They're like, oh yeah, that's what you're saying. That's what she's saying, but you don't believe me. So he got jailed. <laughs> Slept no. like the entire night there. No, the next day was the shoot. That was, I was like, I was telling Dave, I was like, I'm not gonna shoot this film. I'm tired. I'm done. You guys can shoot it. But luckily, I was like, advice was worth it. And everything was just okay. I loved it. Oh, but that's, that's an amazing story to tell once the film is done. <laughs> Yes, yes. That's a gem. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Of man. course, that's awesome. I'm so looking forward to seeing something because you haven't let me see anything yet. Yeah, follow our social media for sneak peeks. <laughs> You're not getting any privileges yet. <laughs> oh, I have no privilege. <laughs> I feel awful. <laughs> yeah, but who knows maybe i'll i'll live stream it i'll go live when it is premiering and maybe you can be one of the first to see it who knows <laughs> who knows who knows who yes. knows uh, but okay, i'll take yeah. that <laughs> yes um, and think, also yeah. in your social media on your social media on your instagram we can see some shots right that you're starting yeah, to yeah. share yeah, yeah, yeah. What we're, we're doing like behind the scenes um, footages, pictures, just to get the hype going on and show you like the process that we went through. Like it was, it was, it is just to get your attention to tell you guys and let you guys know like this is happening. This is what we're doing, and um, it was, it was a fun experience. Yeah, and for my, I think uh, the highlight of my of this entire like journey. Yes. Um, I think as a director, it it showed me um how people are how people will would are, are open minded, are liberal when it comes to like horror movies. Because from my cast to the people who we partnered with, the people who we were shooting locations at, they were like really impressed um, and and really eager to, to you know see us put um, the initiative to you know create a horror movie and not only a movie but a web series, which is just so amazing to you know get support and having people anticipate it, and that was like my initial um, idea with it. Like just let me start this. So that once I get like the feedback from the people, I can try go more deeper into African folklore. Like I can start writing scripts that are now gore and full of blood and just 
off the charts kind of like horror movies based off Kenyan uh, myths, legends, you know, and just uh, horror stories. So this is this will be like more what sets the pace for the horror fan club Kenya's um, film yes. department. And I think if the reception is well. I would be so happy. I would be so happy. And like, I can now start investing more time and more energy into like making more horror films to both um, the global audience uh, in terms of relating to African and uh, Kenyan horror. Yeah. So you're a, a pioneer in, in your place. Right. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say I'm a pioneer yet. No. Um, like I said, like, there has I been think you are. In the in um, this moment, as you said. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Currently. Currently, yes. We, exactly. We good. Currently, I mean. Time. Yeah, because one 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 good thing I like about it is like the entire team was all an all Kenyan um, cast, an all Kenyan crew. It was like the entire production was all Kenyan, and we also had. A, we have like other people who helped us who are from like different countries in Africa who helped us come with the script and like were consultants to the case. And I loved it because recently I was at a film screening last weekend and I saw like this really hilarious comedy slash horror film that was like two minutes long and it was so yeah. beautifully done. Um, and, but it was like a collaboration between uh, Kenyan and uh, United Kingdom um filmmakers and it was just amazing but making um a horror that is you know all african it's it's really good it's really nice i love it i think that you can set a starting point for for horror yeah. in kenya yeah. i mean sometimes it's just about someone being brave enough to do yeah. something yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, because I think there might be a lot of people in Kenya who would love mm -hmm. horror and would love to be part of a community. So you're just kind of, that's what I meant when I say pioneer. I mean, you're just like kind of opening a door for yeah. everyone that really enjoys the genre, but that they, they just don't know where to go. Yes. So yes, and that's the thing, and that's the thing. Like, um, even not only uh in terms of like film, like even when we have events or like when I just meet random, when we go to other events and we as the horror fan club meet people, people will be like, "Oh, I'm into horror, but I can't find my people." Like, we have exactly. very, very amazing people who are in horror enthusiasts, but they're sort of like. Um, still in the closet, they're they're not out there. They haven't met other fellow like horror enthusiasts. And what I can say to these people, especially the ones who are in Kenya, they can just follow us and come to our events, come to our screenings, follow us on social media, and let us be one. And that's one thing I love about humor, because you try to bring everyone together <laughs> in one table. I'm like, I don't care who you are or where you're from, you sit at this horror table and eat from this horror table, like it or not. And that's what I want to also do on like the ground level in Kenya. You know, have these people together and let's do everything horror together. Yes, and that's an amazing thing about you and what you have founded there, because it's not only a film. I mean, you make the, these camp things that, that you can go camp with you. Um, you have the events, the watch parties, they're going to the films. I mean, you, it's, you're not set, setting up a movie. You're setting up a world for horror lovers. And, yeah. and exactly. I mean, that's what it's special about your work. And what everyone needs to know in your country that they can find that exactly. in exactly. your in your club in your horror club. Yes, yes, and exactly. Like that's the point. Like for me, I didn't want just the horror fan club to be just one particular kind of like yeah. entertainment shop. Like um, there are people who are into horror movies. There are some who are into like horror events. There are some who are into horror cosplay, or some who are into horror books. So instead of just focusing on one, I was like, let, let us just do everything and 
whoever we find everywhere we just bring them together under the tiny umbrella yeah. or and that is, that is the point that that is why you see us do events we go from events to film we go to concerts we attend other events that are not even related to horror but we're there branding our t-shirts and in horror cosplay we're like yes. hey we're the horror fan club you want to be part of us <laughs> <laughs> that's how we, we we ruthlessly and aggressively hunt for people who are in but that's amazing yes there's a, there's a time um we had we were invited to like a setup at a movie theater here in kenya i think this yes. was before COVID. and i remember i told like the team that i was with uh we were about three like uh, it was the premiere of the nun um the conjuring series uh the, the nun was premiering yes. hmm? I remember telling my team if every anyone pass if we set up like near the door so that if everyone if anyone passes there they were like we had like tiny tiny ah. horror horror bracelets we were like when someone comes in we grab them by the hand and just slap a bracelet on and give them like our card and we're like thank you go <laughs> and it was it was just so aggressive and it was nice to see some of some of them were scared because it was dark and it was a movie theater so I'm like who are, who are these people holding us why are they doing this but some of them were really nice and have joined to this day and it was just it was just one curious story on to tell yeah <laughs> but that's amazing because you're setting up a community i mean it's a yeah. it's a whole project mm-hmm. so I expect to see a lot of things from you. Yes. Yes. And and just one final uh, word before we finish. I just wanted to mention like it is not only um Kenyan centric or African centric like um it's open to like even people from abroad uh from to the global audience like if you're interested in African slash Kenyan for uh stories urban legends whatever genre you want to every horror fan in the world must be interested in your horror like just hit us up (laughs) in our horror because it is not told yet we haven't even scratched exactly here in Kenya and it is just I have so many many amazing stories my friends have amazing stories we just have so much to say uh, and i think we just want uh, that global audience to get on this platform of the horror fan club Kenya and just tell us what they want to hear and we will tell it to you yeah so that's that's that, 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 that. yes exactly i think once you have it out and you have it available for that's why i always told you like all these little shorts that you make about the african legends and all of that just make more of them because it's amazing. I yeah. mean, it's amazing. African horror is amazing. And now mm-hmm. you have you have the stuff now yes. to, to do I, that. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, thou shall not pass before you get into horror. <laughs> Let the games begin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I, I want to. I don't know. Sometimes it's a bit overwhelming, but you know, you just have to push. And I'm glad I have like wonderful collaborators such as you to, you know, sort of like guide and be the light in the tunnel. Yes. So that, you know, we can go in the right direction. Nah. <laughs> I'm sure you're yeah. gonna you're gonna go so far with this. I'm I'm oh, certain. Yeah. I'm certain. I hope so. Too. <laughs> and so too. and you have my full support for everything. I'm your cheerleader. <laughs> Ah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Ma. <sighs> okay, then we're we're running out of time now, but oh. but we have more things going on and we'll make yes. more more of this, more. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. I can't wait you to, you know, have our cast on this platform and they can get to speak about their own set experiences so that is what we are doing next that would be so amazing so awesome and i have a lot of people interested in what you're doing too because i talk to people i talk Uh about you all the time and there's a lot of people interested in what you're doing so send them my way Okay, then thank you so, so, so much for for being here with me today. 
It has been a pleasure as always. And be, as we wrap up behind the scenes, Dave was listening into our conversation. You can say bye. You can say bye. You can say bye. Wait, I see him. I see him through the glass. On the window? He yes, looks like a all the time. Guy. Yes, I see him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that I've is been seeing him all the bye. time. <laughs> all right. He's chosen to say bye through the glass. Thank bye you so bye. much. <laughs> This has been amazing. Bye. Okay, then Take we'll care. we'll stay in touch. And I'm so aware of where you of what you post on oh, Instagram okay. and everything. Okay. Yes, I see you commenting and liking, and I'm like, yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then we'll talk so so soon. Yes. Yes. Very promise? very soon. Yes, promise. Thank you yes. so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Bye. Okay. Mom. Take care. Okay, bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>